Hey guys, what's up? So the big update on official server has arrived and it's now live. First on our list is the buff on Freya. Her unlimited second skill is now implemented. As you can see, as long as you can cast the skill, it will never go on cooldown. To balance, they had to shorten the airborne duration and lower its early game damage. Her first skill will no longer consume orbs and it can pass through obstacles more easily. If you're planning to main a new hero, you can't go wrong with the new Freya. Next is the buff on Layla. She can now stun enemies after detonating the marks from her second skill. And they also reduce the animation of her skills and basic attacks. This means it's now easier to poke enemies from a distance. To balance, they had to lower her passive damage as well as her physical attack growth by a few points. With the stun effect, she now has a way to stop enemies from attacking her. Maybe it's time to give Layla a chance. Next is the adjustment on Joy. The developer said she has good durability but her burst damage is missing which is not fit for an assassin. To fix this, they had to make the following changes. Passive skill now deals extra damage against non-minion units. The number of dash is limited to 4 and you can only gain shield when hitting a correct beat. And a new effect is added to her ultimate where she gains extra defense for the duration of the skill. So in exchange for damage, her CC immunity and shield are affected. So is this a nerf or a buff? Next is the buff on Esmeralda. They want her to become more competitive in the experience lane so they'll be making the following changes. Her basic attack damage is increased, specifically in the late game, and the second skill cooldown is shortened in the early game. Next is the nerf on Badang. Lower base damage on his first and ultimate skill. The developer said he is too dominant because of the recent knockback effect so they had to nerf his early and mid game damage. Next is the nerf on one one. Ultimate lock range is now smaller and they made changes to her movement boost while in ultimate form. It means you'll need boots if you want to chase enemies with her ultimate. To balance, they had to increase the base damage of her passive skill. Next is the buff on Leslie. Additional 25 points on her passive skill damage and lower cooldown on her first skill. The developer said it's a way to compete with attack speed marksman. Next is the buff on Paquito. His first skill will now give more shield in the mid and late stages of the game. Next is the buff on Eudora. Her enhanced second skill can now stun enemies longer, from 0.6 to 0.9 seconds. And they also increased her HP growth stats. Next is the nerf on Fredrin. Lower base damage on his first and third skill. Next is the launch of Mincitar's revamp. You can now practice him on rank. I mean, classic. Next are the item changes. See Halberd has a new passive that increases her damage against enemies with a higher extra HP than you. That's 8% damage increased against heroes who build HP items. They revamped Twilight Armor's passive. It now gives damage reduction when receiving higher than 600 points of damage. Damage reduction is based on 300 points plus 5% of your max HP. Dominant size is now more effective against high attack speed enemies. Thunderbelt is now cheaper and it gives more mana region. Rose Gold Meteor will now give movement boost when activating the passive. They also increase its shield and lifesteal stats, but they removed its magic defense boost and made the cooldown longer, from 40 to 60 seconds. Blood Wings has a new effect that gives movement boost when the shield is up. That means mages at late game can now remove their boots and replace it with Blood Wings. The cooldown of the shield is also lowered to 20 seconds. Necklace of the Rens has a new passive, just like the item Elegant Gem, where it recovers HP and mana each time you level up. Fleeting Time now works on ultimates that start their cooldown after the duration is over. Examples are Eve, Faramis, and Edit. They removed the mana from Ice Queen Wand and replaced it with 300 HP. Clock of Destiny will now give lower HP stats, including the one from Stacks. 
Next is the battle spell Aegis. It now gives higher shield but he removed its ability to share it with teammates. The cooldown is also lowered from 90 to 75 seconds. Revitalize will now follow the caster just like this. Next is the new rank system on Season 28. You now get 1 star when you win on Mythic. Reach 25 and you'll be called Mythical Honor. You can finally tell your mom that you're an honor student. And once you reach 50 stars, you'll be a Mythical Glory player. Last one is the Diamond Pass. You can now join Recharge events when buying, subscribing, and renewing your weekly Diamond Pass. So that means Alpha's revamp is not included in this patch as well as the new emblem system. There was also no mention about the Lord's skill where it uses a skill on every tower it meets. It's here but it's not on the patch notes. I think many heroes will benefit from the item adjustments, specifically the items Sea Halberd, Blood Wings, and Twilight Armor. You might want to adjust your build now. So what can you say about the update? Which heroes do you think will become more popular with this patch? Share your thoughts in the comment section. That's all for this video. Stay safe and thank you for watching.